A customer sent in their power supply for a Samsung OLED 55 inch TV, and their complaint was that the TV would not power on at all, not even a standby light. So let's take a closer look and figure out how to fix it. I set my multimeter to continuity mode, so when I have continuity, I get a beep, and the first thing I wanna do is check my fuse. And we do have continuity, which tells me that the fuse is good. Now, because my fuse is good, most likely I don't have any shorted transistors. So let's plug in the power supply and do some live DC voltage checks. My first check is gonna be on the filter capacitors, which are here under the heatsink. Let's flip the board over. And over here are the two capacitor joints. Let's plug in the board. I didn't hear a click sound, so let's do our checks. If the power supply is working, I should be detecting about 390 volts on the filter capacitors. If the power supply is bad, then typically I'll be detecting around 170, and that would indicate that the power supply is stuck in standby mode. I'm gonna put my black lead on the negative leg of the capacitor and the red on the positive. And we're reading just about that 170, so it's 168, which is pretty much telling me that the power supply is stuck in that standby mode. That often happens when the switching power supply control IC fails, which is this little guy over here. Let's unplug and discharge the power supply. Now let's switch to our microscope to take a closer look at that IC. The location ID for it is ICS801S. And as you can tell, it is covered in silicone. So in order for us to identify what chip it is, we're gonna to have to remove that silicone first. And also if we are going to replace it, we're not gonna be able to solder to it with all that silicone covering the pins. Okay, and it looks like 6B22 is our part number. For the desoldering process, we're gonna add a little bit of solder to each one of the legs first. We wanna make sure we have good flow. We're gonna add flux to both sides. And using our hot air in tandem with our iron, we're going to desolder the chip. So I don't need to use both, but I like to do that just because it means I can use a little bit less hot air just for a shorter period of time, which will decrease the likelihood of me damaging the board. Now these chips are glued to the board so when you reach the solder's melting point, it will still be stuck on the board. It won't be very obvious that it's ready to be removed. And that's one of the reasons that this repair is a little trickier is because if you do remove the chip too soon and you don't have proper flow, then you will rip traces and it'll make this repair a lot more difficult. For our replacement, I'm going to start by adding solder to just one pad. We melt the solder first, now that it's molten, we're gonna slide the chip into place. I'm gonna let go of it, wait a second. Okay, so I still have a little bit of movement, but it is locked in. Everything looks lined up correctly, so we're gonna then lock in the opposite pin over here. Now it's really important, if I need to make any adjustments on my alignment, this is the time to do it. But it looks like everything's lined up properly, so we can go ahead and lock in the rest. Move that little bit there. Don't need that. We're gonna add a bit of flux again. Touch up all our pads. And I do have a little bit of excess here, so let's remove that. We'll do a quick cleanup. And one of the reasons that I knew my orientation is because I have a black dot on the board here, and I also have a dot on the IC chip over here. So that indicates pin one and pin one. All right, let's plug our power supply back in. And I just heard it click. Let me put the mic closer. Let's plug it back in one more time. So that click indicates to me that we probably have power now. Let's take another look, same thing. Black lead on the negative capacitor leg and red on the positive and we get 393 volts. So that does confirm that our power supply is now fully turning on, whereas it wasn't before. So while it's live, we'll be very careful. We're not gonna touch any of the exposed metal. We're gonna flip the board back over. I'm gonna check my A13 volts on the test point over here. And sure enough, 12.78, that's close enough to 13, so we're good there. We have our V amp, which is 17 volts and we're getting 18, which that's also fine. And we have our VDRV, 30 volts, 
and that's 32, which is also good. So that does confirm we have a successful repair. If you have a power supply that you would like to send in for us to fix, we do offer the flat rate services, which come with a one-year warranty. Those are available on our website, which I will link in the description below. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.